Alright, today I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a sunset eye using ColourPop's newest release for the summer. Um, it's a bunch of bright colors. We've got like hot toddy, super, super pretty. So I don't have anything on my face. Um, I did actually put down some Smashbox photo primer and I'm going to use scotch tape to make sure that I can get a perfect cat eye. I just kind of put it on my shirt first so it's not as sticky and it doesn't like rip my skin off. So I'm just going to go over here and basically I'm just going to try to get it right along there. So I want the tape to end pretty much like where my eyebrow ends. So I might be out of frame for a moment. The tricky part is not the first one, but the second one, making sure that they match up. Same thing, same shirt. And then just kind of, so now I've got the scotch tape just creating that cat eye look for me. And it's down pretty good. Wanna just make sure that it's on like really good on your skin so that when you're putting your eyeshadow on and stuff it doesn't get past the tape and then you end up with a messy look anyways. So the first thing I'm gonna do is prime my eyes and I am going to use my MAC paint pot. Maybe if I can find it. Here it is. And it is in painterly going to go in with a flat brush or this brush. It's an angled brush, but I don't think it really matters. And I'm just going to put this all over my eyelid. So like I said, I have nothing on at this point except for that photo primer. And doing something on the other side. Once I've got this down, I'm going to set it with some translucent powder. Let me turn that sound off. Okay, so I've got my paint pot down. I'm going to use my translucent powder. I'm going to use the RCMA No Color Powder. And I'm just going to take the Morphe M521. It's clean, nothing on it, and just going to go ahead and lay that down. Every once in a while, I'll just make sure that the tape is sticking because as I'm moving my face all around, it's kind of like coming up. So I've got my powder down. All right, and I'm gonna start with a transition shade. Um, all of the colors that came in the summer edition are really bright, so I don't have a transition shade in that particular one. But I think I'm going to use Firefly. It's another one of their pressed shadows. And it's just one of their singles. And it, it might even be too light, but we'll see how it goes. And I'm just gonna take a Sigma E40 and go ahead and put this right in the crease. And so I think with the eye look today, what I'm going to want to do is go from like an orange to a yellow into, I might do yellow, orange into pinks. We'll see how it goes. So I've got my transition shade in there. It is pretty light, so really it didn't, it doesn't make a huge difference but it's down in there. 
And the first color I'm going to start with, I did also bring out my Kat Von D Pastel Goth palette um, because it does have a lot of the sunset type colors in there. Um, I think I'm actually going to go in with Clementine first, which is this orangey shade. And I'm going to put that in my crease and a little bit above. And I'm basically going to work off of that as my crease color. And I'm still using that same Sigma E40. You just want to use a fluffy brush. It doesn't have to be a Sigma. It can be whatever brush that you like. That's just fluffy. And so, like I said, I do like to look up so I can see where it's going to, where you're going to be able to see it. So a little bit above the crease and in the crease. And I'm just blending that in. Grab a little bit more. And do the same thing to the other side. With the Clementine, I am not tapping my brush off at all because it's so light. Um, it doesn't really matter at this point how much is on there and if I get fallout from it it's not a big deal because I can always clean it up with a makeup wipe because I haven't done my foundation or anything for my face yet. So Now that I've got that Clementine color in there, I'm going to take a look at the ColourPop shadows and see if they have kind of an orangey. They've got Best Coast Scenario which I'm going to use. It's a darker orange than Clementine. It's pretty bright. So I think I'm going to use that more at the top of the crease. And for that, I am going to use, I don't want to use the same brush. I want something a little bit more tapered and a little bit more, but I, something I could be more precise with. I'm going to try out the Basquiat brush that came with that palette and just see if that does what I need it to do. And so basically I'm going to take this brighter color and I'm just going to put it right there towards the top so you can see the difference. That orange has a little bit more pop to it. It's a little brighter. Really creating a very, very pretty orange center for the sunset eye. I really, really like that. It's a beautiful color. All right, so do the same thing to the other eye. I'm just concentrating it mostly in the center and then just kind of bringing it up above the crease a little bit. On this eye, I want to bring it up a little bit more because when I'm looking up, I lose some of that orange. Really, the thing about doing eyeshadow looks that take some time or that are really involved is you spend a lot of your time blending and just making sure that the colors themselves are even and that you're really getting that color payoff that you want. So a lot of times it's just being patient to achieve the look that you're going for. So with that down, I am going to start in with a, with a pink right underneath that orange. So I want it to flow Color-wise, I don't want to just start using random like purples and things like that. So I think I'm going to lay down, I don't think there's a pink in the pastel goth. There is not. So I am going to go in with, this is a ColourPop for sure, and it's a really, really bright pink. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use 
I'm going to use the same brush that I just used, that Basquiat. It's just pretty much a fluffy, like, rounded blender. And I am going to tap off the excess because I don't know exactly how pigmented this is going to be. And I'm just going to take it down one, like, little, like, line or one little, just like that. I'm going to do the same thing. Just taking it from the corner all the way to the inner corner. My eye still has the dry spot on that one side, so... Okay, so I've got that bright pink down on both eyes. I'm going to go back into the ColourPop orange on my fluffy Sigma brush, and I'm just going to go ahead and blend it just a little bit more. So. I just want it to look exactly blended, just like a sunset. So that's what we have so far. And again, I'm going to do that to the other side. So now you've got your orange down, you've got your pink down. I'm going to go into a little deeper pink which is going to be Seize the Day. And I do have a, just, so that's kind of, it's gonna be this third one right here. So that's a really pretty like darker pink. I'm gonna lay it down and I think I'm going to lay down um, Hottie Toddy because it has some glitter in it. It's a super shock just over top of it and it will give it that like glittery effect. I think that would look really pretty. So I am going to go in to seize the day and I'm going to be using a Luxie 231. It's a small tapered blending. And I'm just going to put it right below that pink. It's right here. And I'm going to put that all over my lid because I'm going to cover it up with the hotty toddy. So you can kind of see there's just a little slight color variation as you go up from the darker pink, a little bit of the lighter pink to that orange. And then I'm going to top it off with a pretty yellow. And I do have like a sparkly yellow from ColourPop. Um, I might use that. I don't know how crazy that's going to look. Um, this particular shadow seems to be a little bit patchy. So while I'm not super worried about it because I'm going to cover it up, um, it kind of makes me nervous about maybe using it by itself in the future. And so now we've got that darker pink, a little bit lighter, which I'm going to go ahead and hit up that, that lighter pink again and just Make sure we're really seeing it. Because while I want it blended, I also want to make sure that you're not losing any colors in there either. And then one more time on the fluffy brush with the color pop orange. Maybe I'll use the sparkly yellow like in the inner corner or something. I don't think I've ever used like a super sparkly super shock at the top of my brow bone so I don't know how that would go so I do have some of the ColourPop brushes and I am going to use I think I'm going to use this particular one to lay down that super shock um, I just want to clean it off a little bit first because I did use the, um, I used it to do my primer. I don't know why all of a sudden I couldn't think of what it was called. And I've got my brush and I'm just going to dig into Hot Toddy. I'm basically just going to lay it down um, all, all over the lid basically. Um,
go back in for a little bit more. And so I'm just kind of putting it all over the lid and I will go back and blend that, um, I think it was seize the day or for sure. Um, again, just so that it looks really, really blended. I have to say, I really do like the hot toddy super shock and it seems to be doing pretty good with the brush itself. I know that with these shadows, a lot of times they just perform better if you use your finger to put them on. Even though it's still going to be a cat eye shape, I'm just making sure that it's going to be sharp with the uh, glitter super shock. And so that is what that lid looks like. I really like that shadow. It's so pretty. Um, going back in with the other pink and I'm just going to blend that edge. And I'm doing basically the same thing. I do feel like you have to kind of go in, you've got to press a little bit hard to get a lot of product out of that Super Shock pan. I'm going to go back in with the first pink that I used, the For Sure. And just blend it right, right at the edge of that one, or the uh, Super Shock. And I think I am going to go in with some Fix Plus for the... Um, ColourPop shadow, and I feel like I want to use the MAC 217. So I'm just going to pick up some of that orange, put my Fix Plus on there, and then I'm just going to hit it up right there. I just want it to be as vibrant as the other shadows so I don't want it to be just like really dull and just kind of blah. I want it to pop also. I'm not sure what happened there. For some reason it just kind of like picked up a little bit. Um, Alright so now for the yellow. There is a yellow in the pastel goth and it is star. Um, I think I'm gonna start with that since it's my brow bone. I don't wanna get hella crazy. I am gonna use the flat shader from the Basquiat. Gonna pick up some of that yellow and I'm just going to put it right at the top of that orange. And apparently a little bit in the orange, which is fine. So far that's what we have there. Um, it lost some of the pigmentation right there in the center, so I'm going to go back over that. But I do want to use a fluffy brush. I'm going to use the ColourPop. It's just like a flat, kind of flattish um, definer. And pick up a little bit more of that yellow from Pastel Goth. And just kind of put it down, but blend it all at the same time. Now, I do still have to do my eyebrows. Which 
we'll clean up some of the yellow that is way up there. I just feel like right there is not picking up a lot of color for some reason. It's looking a little better. I'm gonna go back in with my MAC 217. I'm going with my MAC 217 just right over the edge of the orange and the yellow. And so far that's what I have. I might do a tiny bit of white. Put down a little bit of white. right there on my brow bone and then just go back over it with the yellow and I'm using this flat Basquiat again and maybe I'll just put it down like that first and then I just kind of want to Blend it out just ever so slightly. And that's kind of what the overall eye looks like at this point. So I'm gonna go over to the other side and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. So I think I'm gonna just start off with I guess I'll do it the same way. Going back in with the pastel goth yellow and just putting it right at the edge of that orange. And blending it a little bit. So And then I want to go in with that color pop, um, kind of flat shader, and just do the same thing. And then I'm going to put down some of that white. And to do that, I'm going to use this brush also. And the white is in the Kat Von D palette and it is called Skull. And I feel like I'm losing some of that yellow on this side, kind of right in that same area there in the middle. So I wanna go back over that And I'm going to go back in with that orange. Again, I still haven't picked up anything else. I'm just going to go back in with that. And at this point, that is the sunset eye. I am going to go ahead and fill in my eyebrows. And I will be right back. All right, so my eyebrows are done. I am going to attempt to do eyeliner on camera. So if I'm out of frame, please forgive me, but I still have that tape on and it's going to help me again achieve that cat eye look. So I'm just going to be using the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner and it is in Trooper. I always shake it up before I use it. I mean, I don't even know if you're supposed to do that, but it seems like maybe, maybe. So... So basically I'm just going to, I'm putting it pretty close to my lash line in the beginning. I feel like it always starts out like this and then it ends up like one of those memes where you got this big ass wing that you never intended to have because it just keeps growing and growing and growing. So let's hope that doesn't happen today. So I'm just kind of going over it. 
and I'm going to take it up to the orange, and basically just bring it down, connect that line, and then fill in that line. Now with the tape here, definitely easier to get the look that you want, at least on the edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and take it in to the inner corner. And so far, that's what I have on that side. And I'm going to do this side. And so I pretty much do the same thing. I just draw little tiny lines. And I don't pull on my eye. At least I try not to. And the tape is pulling or looking right there at the corner of my eye. So I kind of like to stay down if I can get it back down. It's still lifting right there. And I'm just gonna take up this line to the orange. You can tell it a little swirly right there. Same thing. Just fill that in. Take it up. And then into the inner corner. And that's where we're at now. Hopefully I was in frame for at least the majority of that. Um, I am going to let it dry before I get all crazy and rip that tape off. So, I am going to do lashes today. And I haven't done my hair yet. So I'm just letting it dry naturally for right now. I am going to use... I think I'm going to use the Demi Wispy. My nail broke yesterday. Super appreciate that. And I am going to use the Hourglass glue. And at one point I did have like specific um, like tweezers used to put on the fake eyelash and I don't know. I just, I don't know. Those, those are just gone. I did someone's makeup and I put them back in my bag, and I couldn't find them anymore after that. So, odd. Alright, so, just going to, I just peeled it out of the package with the tweezer. I feel like, though, it seems like so violent and it misshapes the lash a little bit. So if you have a tip or a trick on how you take your lashes out, can you please leave it down below? Because mine looks stretched out sometimes. I don't like that. And I think I've decided that I do like this hourglass glue better than the duo glue because the duo is a squeeze tube and sometimes that's a little unpredictable. So I'm just going to let the lash dry for a few moments and I can try to do this on camera also. And basically, I'm just holding it like this inside the tweezer, and I'm just going to place it initially on my lash, on my lash line. So, and then I'm just going to kind of push it down and just do the same thing all the way across. making sure that it's secure everywhere and then just really like pushing down on my lashes and the falsy just so it kind of melds together a little bit better so one down one to go I feel like this part has definitely gotten easier for me over time. Um, it seems like a lot of people are intimidated by applying falsies, but I feel like it's pretty easy once you practice a little bit, get the hang of it, and if you're using the right glue, that kind of stuff, I feel like you can definitely do it. Don't be intimidated by it. Just 
placing that glue just a lot. Really. It's my dog. And letting this dry for a few seconds. And I feel like the House of Lashes glue, you don't have to wait as long as the Duo glue. And same thing. So just kind of looking up to get and the tape is coming off a little bit, so I may have to remove it from that eye, or this eye, in order to get this lash on, which is fine now. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tape, maybe. And there you have that really perfect wing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure those are where I want them. They're down on the lash line. And I'll go ahead and remove this side now. That one was stuck a little bit more. And so this right now is the eye look. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of mascara to the lashes. I was wanting to use something other than the Pixie with Petra, but offhand I don't see anything, so I'll use that. And so just making sure I get all those lashes. And that is the eye look for now. I feel like I want to do a little bit on the lower lash line and maybe even add a jewel. Um, I'm going to do my face now. So I've already primed it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put on the hourglass first and then I'm going to go over top of that with the luminous silk. I'm feeling like I'm not liking this combination anymore. I'm not sure if something changed with my skin or what happened but I don't like the way that it looks anymore. I feel like it's patchy on my nose. Um, I don't know it just it doesn't look good. So I was thinking about trying the the other one that Giorgio Armani just came out with. I think it's like the paper, paper something. Um, and I've tried like a different brush. I've tried just straight up using the Beauty Blender. Still not liking how that looks. Um, so I'm gonna try to switch it up a little bit by first. So I just have the Hourglass on now. I put a little bit of Fix Plus on my Morphe. I think it's the M, or sorry, G36. It's part of the Gunmetal collection. And so I'm just going to start to buff that a little bit. And as you can see, it's so dark. Um, so it's definitely too dark for my skin. But I feel like this is definitely a full coverage foundation. And the Luminous Silk foundation is definitely just light coverage. Um, I know is... I feel like it's combo. I felt like it was oily for a while and it kind of does get oily right like in my T-zone area and like on my cheeks. So I have to be careful of what I'm putting in there. So now I'm just taking on my brush and I'm just going to kind of put it down first like pat it down and then just start moving it around mixing it together. Still wanting to be careful around my eye area, but also wanting to make sure that I get coverage in that area and being careful around my eyebrows as well because those are also done. And I do have a little bit smaller of a brush. Um, I've tried using different brushes to see if there's a difference. 
And so I wonder if like my nose is just dry. It doesn't feel dry, but you can kind of see like it's a little bit, it has some dry spots. But I'm not, I don't know, I'm not feeling that coverage. Not as, I guess not even really the coverage, it's more the way that it's coming out on the skin. Make sure I bring it down my neck. And then I'm going to take just a smaller, it is a Morphe M436 brush, and it has like that, um, like the duo fiber bristles, and I'm just going to kind of take it in those areas that I wanted to be more careful and just make sure that it really gets blended. Alright, so now I'm going to go in with my concealer which is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and I am just going to put that right under my eyes to kind of brighten it up. And this is a pretty thick concealer, so for a while I thought maybe it was the concealer causing the weird, like the way that it was looking on my nose, but I don't think so. But, I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. Before this, I was using the Naked by Urban Decay, one in the tube, and that was fine for a while, and then... I don't know, I didn't like that one after a while either. So I don't know if my skin just gets tired of certain foundations or if it just changes because now, I don't know, it's getting hot, but why would my skin be dry if it's hella hot? Maybe I'm not drinking enough water. I don't know. But I have to get my Beauty Blender damp, so I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I have my Beauty Blender ready to roll. So I'm just gonna start blending out my concealer. And I was also thinking that my problem could also maybe be the primer I'm using, but I feel like I've tried quite a few different ones and it's not really changing. So I mean, it's gotta be my actual skin is the problem, not the product, but I don't know why. So I'm just kind of lighting up my face a little bit. This is my first time doing a sunset eye and I think it's really pretty, I think it came out really, really nice. If I just set myself. All right, so I've got my concealer, my foundation on. I'm gonna go in with my bronzer, and I have been using the Marc Jacobs Tantastic. It is limited edition, so it kind of makes me sad a little bit, but it's so pretty. I really wanted the brush that they were, I guess, offering with it. it definitely didn't come with it, but it's so expensive. It was like $78. So I definitely had to talk myself out of that. So I ended up getting the Tantastic and I did also get the um, Coconut Highlight, the drops. I haven't really used those yet, but I should. Just to kind of keep it healthy, I am trying to grow it long. I'm on my second month of sugar hair bear vitamins, um, and I have noticed a difference. I did take before and after pictures, so those are gonna be on my Instagram. I did get a three month supply, so as soon as I finish up all three months, I will definitely be putting updates as it goes, um, and then a side-by-side -side comparison of one, two, and three months. So I've got my pretty much everything on my bronzer now. Um, I'm gonna start with the under eye portion and I am gonna go ahead and put down Clementine and somehow there's a bug in here now, so that's awesome. And I'm just gonna use like a flat shader. I don't want it to be super dramatic And I'm just gonna go ahead and start the outer corner and put the yellow down. I'm going with the orange and put that just over top. And 
those are from the uh, pastel goth palette. Now I'm going to go over with the ColourPop orange. And I'll leave everything listed down below as far as what colors I use, what palettes I use, the brushes that I use. Um, some of these, like Anastasia Beverly Hill brushes or the Basquiat Urban Decay ones, came with palettes, so you wouldn't be able to purchase those separately. But you may have them in a palette that you already have. I'm just putting that orange down now. I feel like you can't see that super well. So I'm going to go back over that with a pencil brush, which is right here. And it's a Morphe M431. I'm just going to pick up the ColourPop orange. So I felt like that was pretty bright. You should be able to see that. And I'm only taking it like three quarters of the way in. I still really want to use the sparkly yellow from ColourPop, and I'll take the name of it in just a second. So I'm kind of saving that for my inner corner, and I hope that it works out. Now I'm going to go in with the pink color we use, which is for sure, and that's the one that we fit directly under the orange. And just picking up a little bit, because that one is pretty pigmented. And there's just two little... And I'm just going to put that right there under the lash line. And I'm just kind of bringing it up to the, um, the bottom of my eye. Just so that it kind of all blends together and it looks super blended. Do that a little bit more. And then I'm going to go in with the darker color. All right, and this is the seeds for the day. And it's that darkest pink that we use. I'm not going to put the Super Shock uh, down on the bottom for this one. And I feel like right here, we're just losing a little bit of the connection. And just because I can't help myself, this is the um, yellow Tankini Super Shock. So let's see how bright that is. It's not terrible. Um, so I am going to take the Basquiat Urban Decay and I'm going to use this. It's more of like a stiffer, just really stubby brush. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit. I don't know how the Super Shock will do on this brush since it's not a ColourPop brush. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit up my inner corner with this sparkly one. And let's see. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and spread that out. And I'm just kind of a big, kind of like a big clump of it since it's that sort of like cream based came out. And so that's what the sparkly inside corner looks like. I really like it. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. This is how it's picking up on the brush so it's kind of chunky and I don't want all that so I'm just going to try and pat it and then clean off the brush and then go in with what I patted and just kind of move it around and then if I have to I'll go in with my finger which I will there's a little bit more on that eye than this eye so just want to darken it up a little bit and now we have the added inner corner. And I'm going to go ahead and check out what jewels I have. I think I want to add one just to the bottom of my eye. Well, I only had green and blue jewels, so no jewels for this particular look. I am going to go ahead and apply some blush, and I am going to use the Pixie by Petra, and I am going to use, I think I'm going to use like more of a coral colored blush. Maybe I'll try Score from Urban Decay. This is one of the blushes that I got in the uh, 21 Days of Beauty haul. So, that's what it looks like there. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on my cheeks. Now, blush, I love blush, so I always make sure that I put on plenty of it. So I feel like that's one of the first things to wear off through the, throughout the day. Especially if you are touching your face at all or anything like that. So, I think Jeffree Star and Manny MUA's collab Eclipse. Just taking on the other side of the brush. And I do know that this is quite pigmented. And I'm just going to put it on the tops of my cheeks. And take it over to the temple right above the brow. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. 
I'm gonna take it down the nose on the Cupid's bow. Cupid's bow. I think I'm gonna go with K Dub by Kat Von D. I don't know. I think it'll look pretty. Compliments the whole like sunset look. So I am just gonna roll with it and see what it looks like. Worst case scenario is I take it off. Not a big deal. I really like this color. When I bought it, I wasn't sure that I'd really ever wear it. But I feel like it's one of those colors, like, you never know when you're going to need it. I don't know. I mean, you never know when you need a bright-ass fuchsia. And that day has come. Alright. And that completes the sunset look. Tell me what you guys think down below or if you've done something similar using other shadows or if you have the same ColourPop shadows and you did the same eye. I would definitely love to see it. I'm always looking for inspiration and I definitely enjoy looking at beautiful makeup. So I want to thank you so so much for watching and if you're not subscribed please go ahead and do that. And also don't forget to click the bell so that you'll get notifications when I post new videos. And I'll see you in my next one. Thanks.